Oh god, how you going guys? And welcome back to uh, another video for the 737. Uh, today we're going to be going through how to set up uh, a few different uh, things for your FMS. So this is the FMS tutorial. Now there is a few ways, really only two ways that you can do this. I'm going to show you how to manually do it, and I'm also going to show you how to instantly do it. Okay, so without further ado, uh, we'll have a look at the manual one uh, first, and then uh, we'll show you how you can do uh, certain things. We also have Navgraph that I'll be bringing up as well. Make like a, a, a quick flight plan with Navgraph. Go from show you what. But without further ado, let's go ahead and set the air. Okay, now it starts. Now it turns off. Oops. It's on. We need to set ground power, otherwise, we're going to run out of power. Okay, so we'll come down to PMDG FSX session. Go to ground power and request the. Once that's requested, I oh, know that's air conditioning. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> air conditioning. We'll have the air conditioning uh, arriving as well. Anyways, once ground power is connected, we can turn the aircraft on. All good. So now we have uh, access to the FMS. Right. So when you start the aircraft. Uh, you'll be sitting here either in cold and dark or whatever you set in your BMDG setup, uh, whether it's cold and dark or whatever. So you load the state through here. I've got to set the hangar at the moment. But oh, that's okay. Doesn't matter, hangar and cold and dark. You can set your own up, whatever it is. Right, so to start, we want to go into FMC. We want to make sure that the 737-700 model is identified. That's our rating of the aircraft, 24k. The new ARAC cycle is loaded, which it is, and what month or date is loaded. So once that's all good, that's pretty much it. So after that, we'll move over to position and um, our initial position, basically. So you want to find out where you are. Now, I'm not exactly at a gate. I'm just sitting in Sydney at a random um, area, like a stand over in Sydney. So I'm not exactly at a gate, so we're not going to go and put a gate stand in. However, we'll do Sydney, but we're not going to do uh, the reference point, because this reference point here is a reference point of the airport. We want to go to the reference point of the GPS. Now, the reference point of the GPS, how do we do that? We come up to a line, here, set it through to nav, on both. Set that around there, and as you'll see, it'll start aligning and it will take seven odd minutes. Eight minutes there. Okay, cool. But, that's not a big problem. Right, so what we can do is we want to look for radar. Now, I was hoping that we could have that by now. So you would hold GPS, you'll have either GPS here, you'll have something there and something there. Well, I'll show you that in a little bit. But if you don't have that, doesn't mean you can't just grab this one here and drag it down. Okay, but that is not accurate. So I suggest before you go any further, just see if there is one there and then re-edit it. In the route, this is where you want your origin, so Sydney. And let's say Brisbane is my next origin. You can also chuck a flight number in there, so we'll just do whatever number we've got. Now, in a... That's not an air, airline, I just made it up. Um, but when you get to this point, it is advised that the numbers, 232, two, you come over here, bring up your thing, and you'll see numbers here. You're going to change the numbers on... So if you're using BATSIM or whatever and you forgot your call sign, 
uh, you can put it here and you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm Qantas Flight so-and-so, you know? 232, okay? So you're always going to be Qantas Flight or WestJet or whatever, but you can't remember the numbers because your, your numbers change every flight, so you put them there. So that that's the thing that I always do. Company route, uh, we'll get that to that soon. But we also have a runway. Now, we don't know what runway we're going to be on, but if you're given, like, 3-4 left or whatever, you can go ahead and be like, bam, yeah, we're on 3-4 we're on left already. So you can do that. But if you're not there, it's not, it's not a big deal. Okay, so the next thing is, right, to set up the next part of the, the leg, right? So we'll go to legs. We are in Brisbane. Uh, and there we are. So now, what we need to do is bring over the Navigraph the charts. We'll select a flight. We'll select new flight. We'll go manual input. We're going to go from uh, Y, SSY to Y, uh, MML. Let's go to Melbourne. Uh, we'll have an alternate airport, let's say Y, CSB, Canberra. And we'll auto-generate a course, okay? But now it's auto-generated course, and we have all the, all the all the different ones up there, okay? So what we can do now, <clears throat> take note that this is Wollongong on the highway, or the airway, we call them, Hotel 65, okay? <clears throat> so how do we set that up? We go here to the airfield, and we'll go uh, to the FMS, and we'll type in Wollongong. Put that there. And we want to look for the um, what it is. So we'll just say why not? Let's go to the NDB. So we'll go Wollongong NDB. Uh, we want to go to H uh, 65, I think it is. No, not another base. Okay, so it's, it's not a big deal. But there will be a way to go with that in a minute. So the next one will go RAS. Uh, Raz. So keep the highways in mind because it may ask you where you want to go. The other one is TA. So this is the long way of doing it. Okay. TA, uh, TAN, TA. Clear that. TA. And we always want to pick south because we're in Australia. If you're in north, you'd pick the north one. M U uh, R U M I E. Next page. Uh, November Alpha. Bravo Bravo. Alpha. And we'll move across. As you can see, this is time consuming. But if you are willing to learn how to do real stuff. Like, you can do this straight off, um, uh, or other things that you use to make flight plans. Um, here, so we've got another south one. So I use Simbrief. I also use, uh, I don't often use Navigraph. Navigraph I use, uh, through Simbrief. I don't really use Navigraph to make flight plans, but you can. Okay, so that's it there. Okay, so we've, we've done our uh, thing, and then at the very end, we can put uh, YSSY, uh, YMML, sorry, my MML. I think I did Brisbane uh, back here, didn't I? Um, yeah, so that that's YSSY there. Put that there, and we'll delete Brisbane. We delete it. Ah, oh, this one, that's what I want. Delete Brisbane. All right, so this gives us an idea. Every time you see one of these, all you want to do is bring it up. That's it. Okay, so we're at Sydney. We're going to Melbourne. Now, the next one is is obviously a departure. Now, we know that we're leaving uh, our departure of 3-4 left. Um, we don't know what our SID's going to be because uh, we didn't really get given one. But obviously, you'd get given one from uh, the uh, ATC. Uh, and we'll just say we're going to be departing on Richmond 5 from runway 34 left. And we'll hit uh, execute, which is okay. We'll go routes, activate, execute, done. We'll make sure that we delete the Sydney one. Bring Wolf, uh, Wollongong up. 
that's not necessarily a good one because Richmond goes out and then Wollongong. So we have a look at our white plane when it pops up. Ah, uh, no, we can look at it now. Pops up like that. Kind of dog legs, big time. So we go out to Richmond out here, as you can see. Go all the way out there, and then we shoot back down south. So really, that's an unideal. But that gives you an idea of how to set it up manually. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to show you how to set it up with Simbri because everything else after this uh, part of the legs stuff is basically the same. All right. So here's those GPS that I was talking about because the IRS is aligning. So this is the correct one that we should do. So we'll grab that, bring that back here, and post it in there. That is the correct way of setting that. Okay, so now how do we set using SimBrief on here? Well, let's go and get SimBrief up, shall we? Let's go you just that. Alright, so just log into SimBrief here. Alrighty, so you should see Simbrief right now. Get rid of a Navigraph as well. Don't need Navigraph anymore for now. Alright, so if you haven't seen Simbrief before, I can do a tutorial on that uh, if you need it. But we're going to be going through it anyway. Uh, so for for just now, just to get you flying, we're just going to make an account, which you've, I've already done. And we're going to hit Dispatch. Now, when you make an account, unless you own Navigraph subscription, you're going to have out of date. It's not a big deal, but honestly, pay for one month and you can get the latest update. And then you probably won't have to pay for another couple of months anyway. But here you are, create a flat. So we're going to go ahead and create a flat. We're going to just name uh, whatever we are and then our number is 111. Okay, we're departing Sydney or wherever you want, arriving in Melbourne. And it gives us our alternate is MAV, our date, and then we want to pick our aircraft type. Up here, I have created uh, some aircraft that I'm going to use now. This one that we have now, the Boeing 737-700, is not there. So we're going to use a generic one uh, for now, and then eventually I'll make another one. And what I would do is when I make it, I will put the um, profile that I make for Simbrief in the description below for people that want the profile for Simbri. If you can download it, and off you go. All right, so that's just the uh, the uh, airframe there. Okay, on the right hand side, you can choose whatever you want. Sometimes you use Qantas, which is QFA, but at, lately I've been just using Lido. Okay, you want plan step climbs, and you probably want runway analysis as well, and also you want to check other things as well. So, is your plane using a lot of fuel? Mine's brand new, so no. What is my cell code? I can change my cell code if I want. And I can change the registration if I want. Whatever registration I want. Um, obviously, that'll all be dependent if you make your own up here as well. Okay, so for now, this we're just going to just run it as basic as possible. You don't have to change anything else here. It is picking it up via the weather. Okay, so down here, we have a flight plan. It's just pretty much direct. Maybe I want to do this one instead. Okay? It's really up to you which one you want to pick. So you can check to see which one's better. That's 404. This is 413. That's 431. But you want to kind of see um, which one's probably used the most. Uh, so this one here is valid. Some routes are not valid. So we'll just go ahead and we'll use this one right here. Now, according to the weather, it says departing 7 and um, arriving on 9. So, But that could completely change by that. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and generate this. So we'll generate. And we'll generate that. And now we'll get given our flight plan uh, all compiled. So here we are. 
We've got all our flight plan, we've got our route, and we've planned for the optimum flight level, and our flight level uh, is 300, F, uh, flight level 300, and that's our route. Then we have the actual flight plan. I have it set for Lido. This is the Lido format. So we want to take note of a few things here. You want the cruise, um, the boss index. So for this particular flight, boss index is going to be 33. You also want to take note of the average wind, uh, the ISA plus three, and maybe the fuel gun. You also want to take in your flight level. You also want to take in your fuel. And you also want to take in your passengers, how many passengers we're taking, how much cargo we're taking, and the payload and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got all of your flight plans here. And this has worked out. So this section here, FL is flight level, MOR, I can't remember what that is, and that is distance. Okay. So the flight level is the first one. So flight level, flight level, flight level. So that's all you want to do is you want to see what the flight level is for each individual one. You can see what the distance is for each one as well. Okay? So you just want to make sure that you got the flight levels on your flight plan. So you can go off on this one. Alright, so that's the flight plan. Now what do we do uh, with this? Now I've got the SimBrief downloader available right here. And I will show it to you right now. Downloader. There it is. I wonder if that's going to pop up for you. I'll just grab the downloader. And transition that over. So this is the same brief downloader. And it automatically downloads straight into your flight sim. I haven't got this to work just yet. Uh, so bear with me. But here is where the flight simulator one is. Okay, and down here is the um, the PMDG flight plan. So flight plans and wing lung up plane. This is the one that you want here for PMDG. Okay, so I'll show you where that is. It is users. Okay, now you probably can't actually see it. My bad. Let's grab this one, and I will change. There we go. There, that's better. All right, so you can see. So it is in users, your user, app data, local packages, flight simulator, uh, with a whole bunch of numbers, local state packages, PMDG, work, and flight plans. As you can see, there's nothing in here that I can see. It's just selecting a folder. And this is the weather one here. Okay, so we're in the flight plans one, and that's the weather one. So if we grab that, we copy this, uh, we set the folder, we've done that, so I'm just going to cancel that. So that is that folder right there that you can see. If I open up a, another folder, right here, there you can see, you can paste this in here, and we can go straight to it. Now you can see I have a flight plan in here, and I also have the weather in here, okay? So now what I want to do is click on this. We'll grab the uh, Stembrief folder. And we're just going to export. As you can see, it's only Sydney to Melbourne. So we're just going to export. Make sure that you click on that. Just to make sure it's the one that you've just used, that you've just made. Uh, so it should be there. Latest flight plan is now available. Then we're going to export these to wherever I've set them to go, okay? So here they are, they're ready to go. You probably can't see it, but it, trust me, it's there. We hit OK, and they should be there. But for some reason, it wasn't working for me before, but it is now, so I'll show you what it looks like. Now there it is. So now we have a new flight plan. So we have the Sydney to Melbourne, and we have the... Sydney to Melbourne weather as well. Okay. And that is the Windsor Loft. 
it is not the actual weather at the airport it's just the wings aloft so all the winds that are going to be on the way there and i'll show you how to use those as well now if you can't get this to work i will try and uh, do another tutorial but like i said it has to go into your app data doesn't matter where it's downloaded i think it might be different for steam i've got the store edition but that's pmdg it needs to be set up don't just do this flight simulator one it won't work it has to be this pmdg one okay so that's it and the manual way of doing it you can close that and it will uh, give you a little alarm saying that it is still open even though it's closed but it also you can come down here let me get rid of that annoying screen you can come down here and look for the flights uh, the pmdg anyway but there's your flight plan you can download that and you can download that and then put them in its respective files like I've already shown you. But you could get the SimBrief one to do it automatically. You don't have to do it because when you've landed at another airport and then all uh, you've made up a new flight plan, right? All we have to do is open up SimBrief again, the SimBrief downloader, right? And then we've landed, you just click the refresh button, export, and then it will already be there. So how do we get that on the sim? Well, let's go and have a look at that right now, shall we? Alrighty, so we are back in the aircraft. And we want to go and put that in the sim now, okay? So if you're at a gate, so just say we were at gate 34, 35, uh, there's not a database, but if there's a gate out there, it'll, it'll come up. Okay, 40 in there? Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> But if there was a gate there, there'd be another uh, GPS there. But of, again, um, that is if you're at the gate. But we're not. Anyways, go to route. Okay, we want to request a flight plan. Okay, where are the files? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Whoop, jeez. Alrighty, so if you request the flight plan, it should be there. So let's go and have a look at that again. Uh, flight plans... I think we need to do this MML. Oh, I don't know why I've got Brisbane there. Let's uh, change that. I think that was just before, wasn't it? So we've done Sydney to Melbourne. We want to request the flight plan. And now the aircraft has picked it up, okay? So now we can go and put QFA uh, 1, 2, 3. Will that pick it up? No, not yet. Okay, we've selected our flight plan. And off. So you got to put the origin and then the destination, then request the flight plan. Because otherwise you'll have a list of a crap ton of flight plans. And all that sort of stuff. Okay. So what we'll do is... Uh, I think it's uh, requesting the flight plan now. So now we have route uplink ready. We'll load that. It takes a little bit. It takes a little bit. It's alright. <laughs> we'll activate it. And, and execute. Now everything has been put in its right place. We've got all our lights all our different uh legs everything okay so now it has the flight plan even though it looks the same uh in there all ready to go okay um so yeah i really hope that helps for you to do that okay so next let's go to perf page okay so now we want to be able to fill the aircraft up right so we need to go back to simbrief and get our flight plan. Uh, not that one. That's... Ah, uh, yeah, here it is. Oopsies. Oh, there we go. Transition that over. And we're going to quickly scroll up here. Now, let's have a look at our flight plan. Now, you can get a PDF version, and you can print it out if you wish. But here, we want 134 passengers, and... 3,300 in cargo, right? So what we're going to do... I'm going to make that a little bit smaller for you. Just so you can see it. Right? Grab that, put that over there, and bring that up. Right, so we're going to go and load our aircraft. Now, there's two ways of loading it, and I'm going to show you the... Just the standard way. Just the very easy standard way. So here we are. We want our fuel. Okay? So we come up here, and we say... 
it needs block fuel of 5,490. All right. PCI extra, which is pilot in command, I'm going to say I want an extra one, okay? Maybe I want an extra two. So I want 7,490 kilograms extra. So I want 2,000 extra, okay? So that is my fuel level for this flight. Then I'll come over here to payload, and then I'll select my classes. Now we need 135, right? Come down here, we need 135. 134. So, we can only really have 128 on this aircraft, uh, because we have first class. Now this, you got to remember, this flight plan is picking up just a generic aircraft. So, what we need to do is we need to go to the aircraft options, simulation... Uh, and I believe it is... Might not be here. Might be at a different one. I can't remember where it is now. <laughs> um, and I did the video on this. Aircraft, displays, failures, equipment. Two class, single class. We'll go to single class. We'll go to return. And we'll go back to... Um, FS options, and now you'll see that we have none, but we have economy of 148. So now we can go one, three, four, and put that there. So that is our new uh, passenger limit. Okay, so we have 3,300 kilograms of uh, cargo, so we can split that of one, 3,300, so. Uh, 1,000... Okay, 1,500 and... Uh, I think we need to get rid of... Uh, I think it's one... Three... So, uh, we'll go six... Fifty. Whoopsies, that's too much. Something like that. You just split it up. However you want. Probably not correct. My math's a bit crap today. So doors, these are all your doors. That's how you control the doors. And that's your pushback. I'm not really uh, into that pushback. I use the other one. But that is how uh, you use uh, your fuel. So that's how you will set it up. The other way to set fuel and uh, everything. You can come in here. You go over here. You request fuel. Okay, so we're already initially put in our fuel automatically, instantly. But if you are doing a turnaround and you want to do the whole sit and wait sort of thing, you can set the target and it will come, the field truck will come out and fill your aircraft up. And that is how you do that. So if I want an extra, say oh, I need 8,000 for the next run, I will put it in there and then it will. this will say start filling. But you need to call the field truck first, okay? The other way to do passengers, we've got 134 passengers. Okay, we've just landed. Uh, we're only having 85 on the next flight, okay? But we need to deep plane, but first we need stairs, okay? We need to call in the stairs, or we need to call in a jetway, okay, before we can actually start. Um, but that, that's just pretty cool, okay? So that's how you set those up. I'll go more into that later on. And the good thing about doing this is you can do other things around the aircraft while the aircraft's doing other things. But while it's doing that, BMDG have their own aircraft, um, own vehicles, as you can see here. There is vehicles all over the place doing all sorts of things. There's an air cart there and all that sort of stuff. So we'll go into that and I'll show you all the different features uh, right now. So we can come in here. We can go maintenance ground. So we can uh, request a service hydrogen fuel. We can request engine oil. We can press uh, reset engine EGT. We can fill the fire bottles if we had a fire. Refill oxygen bottles. Full brakes. So this is all just servicing sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, ground services. We can come in here um, and we can request portable water, lavatory, maintenance van. Let's uh, go ahead and request the fuel truck for sheer sakes. Um, we'll go back to stairs, right? Uh, so we'll go back to stairs. We'll request the stairs front and rear. Uh, we don't have the air... Well, I can extend the air stairs if I wanted to. Passenger bus, cabin. Uh, there we go. Uh, and then we can request the all the other vehicles. Okay. 
So we can have a look. And these all come in real time. They're not going to come all at once. I've requested every single vehicle in PMTG. And there is liveries for these. And you can make liveries for them. I don't know how to, so I probably won't make a video on it. But there will be liveries. Now, I'm using the PMTG uh, 737 house model uh, livery. So there will probably be uh, liveries for WestJet uh, and all the other liveries that come with it. Uh, so you'll see as these vehicles roll in, and there's the passenger one there. As these vehicles roll in, doors and stuff will open. So there's the fuel truck there. He's all ready to go, and if I ask him to start fueling, he will. There's the passenger bus. So this, this guy will, like, come here... The door should be open, ready to go. If they, there comes the thing. The, the services are going up. Actually, really cool with the people walking around. That's not part of the sim, all right? That's uh, but yeah, these guys drive. They don't have drivers. <laughs> so some of these things should open up for them. Then you got the door that just opened up there. Cargo door is opening up here. And uh, all that sort of stuff. You got another trolley boy coming along there. You got the lavatory and the water getting filled up. You got the passengers over there. You got the service van. So basically, there's a lot of different things. Here comes your trolley bags. Uh, for one of the places, there'll be another trolley bag coming from the other place. So yeah, that's how you set that up. Alright, so that's how you set all that stuff up. So we, let's go back to loading. Now the aircraft's fully loaded, right? So we've got zero fuel wet. You can click that. There another. If you don't want to click that to find out, you can just go here, go to payload, and write down your zero fuel weight here. You can write it down and punch it in yourself. You don't have to because all you have to do is click on it, and it inserts it automatically. Now we said that we took 2,000 liters extra, so I'm going to put that in reserves. Boss index we said was 33. I'm going to put that there. As you can see, we'll have a look at our cost index up here. Okay, that's the cost index. Alright, so the next one that we want to have a look at is the flight level. Now we know the flight level was 300. Now a lot of people will probably want to go flight level uh, like that. I don't know if this is going to work, but it might. Okay, some people might put the uh, that forward slash in. Doesn't work. I've tried it. Doesn't work. Uh, cruise wins. Now, I did say this. The average wins is 196 at 03. So, uh, 196, uh, 296. So, 296 at um, 037. And we're going to go punch that in. Okay? Now, the outside air temperature uh, and all this sort of stuff, I'm not 100% sure what that is. It used to be your, uh, what do you call it? ISA, you'd punch ISA in there, but yeah. All right, so flight level in Australia is 10,000. Flight level up, uh, trans level and uh, trans altitude in Australia is 7,000. In America, it is 18,000. And in UK, it is 6,000. All right, remember that. Uh, so for me, it is 10,000. In the settings, you can set this, and I haven't yet, that it will always be there as default. Now, you can execute this, but by SOPs, you don't. You let the FO do his walk around, he comes back and checks it, double checks it. Okay, so plan fuel, we have the 7.5 on board, right? If you can see right there. We've planned for 5,490. So we're going to say 5.5. Okay. That is the planned fuel, okay? All right. So there we go. Now we move on to the next one, which is the energy limit. Now, have a look at the outside temperature. Is it 20%? If we have a look up here, uh, 20 degrees, not uh, we Yes, it is both 20, okay? But I want to say it's 25 outside, right? So I'm going to put in a rated, a derated uh, 25. And I want to derate this 22K on maybe climb one or climb or climb two. Um, you can pretty much have a look at the uh, SOPs on that. I always do it to take off one and normal climb. Uh, if you don't have a noise ambience there, you can just leave it to 2K. But if you have no ambient, noise ambience, you'd have it down as low as you can get it. So 20K climb. Okay. 
just to get the noise ambience out if they if that's in place. Otherwise, just do the the one like that. Next one's take off. Now, this page here, there's you can just go ahead and start on this page, but there's uh, something else that you should do first. You come over here. Now you want to select the runway wind. You get this from the ATIS. Now the way to get ATIS. Now you can do this. Uh, obviously, if you're not that one, uh, the clouds. If you're using live weather, you can go to Meta and Sydney or the airport that you're at, and you can get your Meta. Now we have our ATIS here. The winds are 100 at 15. Okay, so we'll close that. The 100 at 15 knots. Alrighty? Cool. So that's how you do that. Runway slope. Right, so how do we find the runway slope? Now this is a, a little tricky. Now I haven't done it for a while, so I'm going to try my best to get this thwarted. Now I can't remember it exactly. I'm going to bring it over. Uh, we're also going to open up Navigraph. We'll get rid of the flight plan now. Um, so we'll also open up Navigraph, and I want to show you something with Navigraph as well. Right. We'll grab Navigraph out. Go to Sydney. Open up the charts. And we want to look for the airport diagram, or at least an air, a, a, a airport information about the runway. So we want to look for elevation. So E L E V, which is 7. And down here... We have another one, which is 14. Now, on the calculator, I have just here, get rid of that, and we'll turn the calculator on. You can see just here. We want to go 14, which is the highest level, minus 7, okay, divided by... The runway heading, so I'll bring uh, not the runway heading, the the runway length in meters. So the meters on this one is three nine six two. Okay, so divided by three nine six two, and that gives us in a percentage. Now we want to times that by I think it's a thousand. One point seven. Okay, that is the formula on how it is. Now it is 1.7 degrees. Now if we were on 3.4, right? We're going downhill. So it's 1.7 degrees down slope. So what we would do is we'd go down. So D for down, 1.7. And that is the slope. That is a minus degree slope. If we were going on the 16s, go in the opposite direction, we'd go up 1.7. I hope that makes sense, okay? But since we are not even on any of those runways, it doesn't matter. We're actually on, I think we're leaving on runway 7. So let's have a look at that again. So runway 7 is uh, 16, and 5 is 20. So grab the calculator out again. Um, where's the calculator? There it is. So 20 minus 16... Four divided by the meters two five three zero times a thousand one point five. Now we're going uphill this time, like I said. So we go U one point five. That is your upslope on the runway. Okay. I really hope that makes sense. Um, to get you the runway slope. Then once you've done that, you can select the runway. Is it wet? Uh, is it dry? Is it SKR? I'm not sure what SKR is. If anyone knows, please put in the comments. But uh, if we have a look outside, it looks dry. Okay? So we'll just say dry. Right? And that's it. We can go back here. We can select flaps. We can select the CG. Again, just press it and off you go. Uh, and then the trim. Okay, so when you get to this point here, we want to select the trim to 6.41. So we'll have a look down here. Ready? There is a 5. Okay. 
Uh, so that's four. We want 6.41. So six should be here. And we want to come all the way back. Probably be out there somewhere. I think. Alright. So it's about there. That's how you do that. So that once that's set, that's fine. Uh, you want to select the Q&A off. I think it is. Uh, Q-R-H off. Which will give you some speeds here in a minute. Well, first off, what we need to do is select our departing runway. Um, so we're actually on 7. And we're going to go Sydney to... Uh, we're going to go Fisher 8 departure. And enter going to transit Wollongong okay and now we will just want to bring that up and we want to go that I really hope that all makes sense to you guys okay that's just yeah it's 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 pretty easy all right so we want to execute now the FO is back and he's executed it now we go through it again and we'll want to see a few things okay we want to keep the QRA uh, QRH off so we can see all our things want to select the depart first because we did the depart um, after we selected our speeds it would uh, reset all our speeds so here are our speeds uh, don't be they are pretty low but we are quite light so it doesn't matter if you don't like them you can override them uh, just to get a little bit of speed out uh, that's what I normally do. Uh, we'll do uh, 140 on that one. Not that. We don't, we're not going that fast. <laughs> okay, and so there we are. So we have enough takeoff weight uh, to go. Now, we need the remaining uh, in feet. Now, you can't change the last two digits on the zeros there. So it doesn't really matter. But we'll have a look at it anyway. So we want the feet number. So 8,300. Uh, and it's only one extra feet. So we'll just put in here 8,300 and we can't change the thing so the remaining runway is 8,300. Okay, that's all you need to do there. Once you are satisfied and ready to go you can put that on and then you'll see all your references pop up here on the screen uh, ready for you to go for when you take off on your... Uh, when you take off so there it is there you can see the speeds are all sorted now what you would do as well you'd have a look at your vref okay i've set it for 134 okay uh we come up here and you'd set 134 plus 5 whatever i'm going to set it for 140 like i said i would and off you go okay so that's basically it then you can go here you can set up some cruise stuff uh if you need to change anything uh whether it's speeds uh your flight levels, uh, all that sort of stuff. Econ Cruise, Engine Out, and your Decent Page. I don't really go too much into these, um, but you might want to do these ones here. You're getting set up for descent, which will be a later tutorial uh, for descending. This is to help the aircraft descend a little bit better. Okay. The forecast winds are ready to go, so we can load those. Okay. And then it puts it all in there. All automatically done for you for when we get over there. Okay? You can enter that in. And it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, I would have sh shown you how to do that later on. Um, but it may as well now. So the trans level is a thousand feet above the actual uh, trans altitude. So the trans level in Australia is, you guessed it, 11,000. Okay? Then it will change all the, uh, the winds and stuff for you. You'll have your... Um, ISO deviation from outside, so you'll need the Q and H and the uh, all that sort of stuff. So that'll be in a later a later video. All right. So basically, that is the FMS setup. Okay. Uh, when you get to your destination, they will uh, give you another star. Um, they'll give you a star, not a sit. And you'll come in here, and they'll say, right, uh, you're uh, cleared ILS runway one six. Um, yeah, runway one six. You can pick one of these two. I always pick Zulu. I don't know why. I just do. Uh, we need to find our... I think it's Lizzie arrival, And then uh, execute. And then you'll come into here. And you'll find... Well, this hasn't done it. But if there's any of those squares there, you just click on it. And then you paste that into the... Um, into the... Uh, 
and that is it. That, that is the basic, basic thing of how to set up. Okay, there is other advanced functions with the FMS. Most of them now are in the air, so we will be going over those later on. So like the holds, um, the um, fix here, N1 limits, um, so descents and all that sort of stuff. We've already shown you one through the forecasts here. Progression page, uh, all of that sort of stuff we can teach you up in the air uh, through live streams and other videos that I do. But that's the FMS video uh, for the Boeing 737. Uh, now I hope that is the same for the 600, 800, 910. So I'm, I'm not going to do it again. Uh, but yeah, if I have to do a more advanced one later on, I will. But that'll get you going. We've shown you the manual uh, way of doing it. We've shown you the sim brief way of doing it. And hopefully I'll show you the tablet way of doing it when we get the EFB. So yeah, um, the aircraft's ready to go. Um, we can start up and take off and fly that route. Uh, so, any questions, put it down in the comments. And thank you very much, guys. And we'll talk to you next time. See ya.